understanding of aerodynamic form, the type of features that tri-sleeves are asking for these days, but also rider positioning, which has changed a lot for long course tri-sleeves since we introduced the time machine back in 2011. Our product team spent nearly four years getting closer to triathlon. We also leveraged our BMC Ethics triathlon team. But equally as important, we are never afraid to look outside the building for expertise. We've always been proud of the wind tunnel performance of the Time Machine 01 and it's continued to do well in independent testing. At the same time, we knew it could be even faster. So being faster doesn't only mean lower drag values. It's also about rider positioning and being able to keep your aero position for a long time. Also, we focus more on sidewind stability rather than straight line speed. Nobody knows more about aerodynamics of land vehicles than Formula One. So that's where we went, to the wind tunnel of Sauber Engineering in Hinwil, Switzerland. One of the most technically advanced aerodynamic centers in the world. There's no shortage of people uh, referring a CFD as development tool, but we believe that the CFD process is only as good as the develop development process behind it. And this is where we see our difference. We use a tool called uh, the Medusa arm. With the Medusa arm we can pick any point in the wind tunnel around the object and we can measure the actual velocity and pressure on this point. So on top of uh, just measuring on a scale the drag and airflow around the, the object on the surface using fog, for example, uh, we can specify at each point the velocity vector. Then we feed this information back into the simulation process to refine more our development tools. Basically, the great advantage of CFD is that we can really look into the flow, into the flow volume, and see and understand the mechanisms of the flow itself. Uh, we can plot a slice through the volume field and take any pressure or velocity plot on it. Furthermore, it allows us to pick any air particle and follow its trace around the bike. Another great visualization is uh, what we call like cloud plots. So we pick any region where the air velocity is below a certain value and then look what is the extent of this region. Then in the development process we try to minimize this region. Basically as starting information we needed from BMC what are the typical wind angles and the likelihood of the occurrence for each wind angle on the bike. Based on this information we designed an optimization tool which then allowed us to optimize the tube shapes of the bike. We fed that tube shapes into our supercomputer, which then analyzed all the different shapes and came up with the most optimized design for each tube. This information we sent to BMC and integrated into the bike design. It's always of interest for Sauber Engineering to apply our tools at different industries. It gives us the opportunity to see problems from a different perspective and find solutions how to solve this. Those solutions we can then apply and transfer to our work in Formula One. The V cockpit provides the most aerodynamic front end position, especially for riders requiring a higher stack. There's a larger back pressure created by the thighs and torso. The V cockpit was the solution to minimize the negative impact of trying to be aero and comfortable. The forward offset also provides more vertical compliance than a traditional system. We also haven't forgotten about those who want to go low. We have a flippable flat base bar for either high or low hand positions. The new time machine was optimized for tight leads. The forward mount seat post position gives you an effective seat tube angle of 80 degrees. The four mounting holes on the seat post head allow for an effective seat tube angle of 82 degrees. But it's also usually illegal in the rear mounting position. When the dual mount seat post is in the forward position, it creates space for a rear storage box. This storage box has plenty of room for tubular, tires, tubes or tools, or whatever it is that you keep taped to your bike. There's also two water bottle mounting positions, an upper one for easy access and a lower one for optimal aero performance. Additionally, we also have top tube storage mounting options. Since the Time Machine TT01, which we've been producing back in 2006, we've been focused on the rider interface with our bikes. Each of those bikes was made to order, based on the individual measurements of the riders. The Time Machine TM01 had a system called Position to Perform, or P2P which is focusing on aerodynamic performance regardless of stack height. With the feed cockpit, Sauber Engineering helped us to push that even further and to see what could be done and how to do it. While the frame sizes of the new bike are the same as before, small, medium short, medium long and large, the interchangeable front end makes this new machine even better fitting than before. 
The overall look of the bike is thanks to a dedicated product development cycle that wasn't complete until we made the finest product out there. The machinery of the Impact Lab allows us to make rideable prototypes in a very early stage, like you see here. For example, this one has an early version of the brake booster, the stem and the brake arms. On the rear of the bike, you see we also used our carbon expertise by modifying an existing product to test out the dual mount seat post. The Impact Lab, where we stand right now, is our in-house research and development center. A playground for our engineers. A project like the Time Machine 1 would not have been possible without it.